This insane Lil Tay saga started August 9th when apparently the family of Lil Tay posted a death announcement to her Instagram announcing that her and her brother Jason had passed away. Almost immediately it was given cloud chasing because I was aware that behind the scenes, Lil Tay and her brother was planning a big comeback. Rice Gum spoke about it, Ben Baller confirmed it, and a lot of people in the industry were speculating, yo, Lil Tay is gonna be back in 2023. So this was already out there. So for this announcement to happen, with no police report to confirm the manner of her death, her family wasn't speaking, and then her manager even came out and said he is very skeptical about the death announcement. Is Lil Tay really passed away? I'm going to share the information I have obtained so far. My name is Harry Sang. I was the last known manager of Lil Tay. Also, I have been in some of her videos before. Be careful, God damn it, what the hell? At approximately 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Little Tay's family had released an official statement announcing her passing as well as the passing of her brother. Subsequently to this announcement, I have engaged in conversation with individuals who maintain a close connection with the family, and I was told they cannot talk about the event that occurred nor any current affair. In my pursuit to comprehensive this information, I also engaged with my personal psychic who share insight from her guardian angels suggesting that the initial news may not be entirely accurate. And then conveniently 24 hours later after the news already got over 100 million impressions and hits, Lotte and her brother conveniently now has access to the internet to where they can now deny the rumors and say they was hacked. But even a manager wasn't buying the hack story. Little Tay is not there and her Instagram was not hacked. Here is the crazy part. 24 hours later, TMC reported Little Tay's team had notified them she and her brother are alive and their Instagram was hacked, which I call it BS. Here is how I believe it went down. In the beginning, I believe Jason, the brother of Little Tay, has someone to took over Little Tay's account. That whoever took over released a statement of Tay's passing. And then they were just going to let the news sit for however long before someone catch up. Then they will get mad to intervene to get the account back. Originally, I thought Little Tay's brother Jason was the only one that was complexed in this disgusting public stunt. As he was known to do something crazy, and he is the only one that have access to Little Tay's Instagram account. However, I now have proof that in the case her whole family were possibly complicit into this as well. What I mean is, the mom, the brother, and everyone that involved with them are all complexed. Maybe Tay herself, but who knows. Obviously they weren't hacked. Obviously they faked their own death announcement. Bruh, they was telling people for months they had something big coming for Lil Tay's comeback. And this was the big thing to garner attention in headlines. Now, earlier this week, when Lil Tay arrived in LA, Lil Tay and her brother called the paparazzi on themselves so they can get footage of Lil Tay at the airport arriving in LA to drum up more excitement and more publicity for their big comeback and announcement on Saturday. Is it true that your father faked your death? Can you tell us any more about what your father did? Have you seen him or spoken to him? Because he's denied it. Clearly staged. Clearly her and her brother Jason still got their appetite for attention that they had five years ago and they planned all of this out. Now, if I thought there was still a shred of doubt in my mind that Lil Tay and her brother Jason faked her own death for attention and for her big comeback, that shred of doubt was taken out of my mind completely. After I seen her first video back. jokes this live stream was presented to us as a live stream that low tay was gonna clear up all the death hoax rumors all the rumors over the last couple of years where she's been and what she's gonna do now that she's back but she starts off the live stream by giving us a concert right she starts off with a country song then she puts down the country songs and pick up like a more metallic guitar and goes into full-on punk rock <laughs> Ah! 
Yo, lock her up, yo. Lock her up. Now, after the punk rock session, she then went to a black screen and came back flexing on us. Y'all already know what the fuck going on, bitch. Lil Tay's back. It's been five years and y'all still broke. The go is back. Five years and I'm still the youngest one out. Five years and y'all bitches are still broke. So don't take it out on me. Why the fuck are y'all coming at me for? Y'all hating ass bitches were hating on me when I was nine years old. Talking all this shit when you don't fucking know me. So stop fucking talking. You did not come up. You had five years to come up and you didn't. So don't blame me, bitch. Five years. That being said, let's just get the fuck into it because I have a lot of shit to say. It looks like character development was not in the cause for Lil Tay's big comeback. It's still the same old shtick flexing on us, but for a live that's supposed to be serious, where you are addressing abuse, where you are addressing quite possibly saving your reputation and us not thinking you're just a pathological liar who lied about this death hoax and now you're lying on your father as a way for you to come back and still have a career. Like you threw your father under the bus and lied to millions of people that you were dead to have some social media clout. But she says she's going to clarify everything. So we sat back and I listened. And what I heard from this point forward was just absolute nonsense. But unfortunately, you got to sit through it as well. So let's get to it. Why well, I've been gone. So, where do I even start? Five years ago, I became famous. And my abusive absentee father, who had not been in my life for years up till that point, decided to come back into my life to take control over my career and my money. That's why I disappeared. I always thought this narrative that Lil Tay and her brother has been trying to put out there, that Lil Tay's father has been living off her money for the last three years, and now it's been five. And that's why Lil Tay's father has been keeping her captive in his home Let's just use our common sense real quick, right? Because it's hilarious because it's just stupid. Why would the father they claim who was living a luxurious career from the profits of Lil Tay's videos in her career, why would that father then get a court injunction that stops her from making any videos over the last five years? Why would that father want her to stop making videos and stop making money if he's living luxurious off her career. Lil Tay father is quoted saying that he stopped Lil Tay from making these videos over the last five years because he didn't want her to put that negative imagery out there in these vulgar videos and make mistakes as a kid that could have irreversible damages on her career as an adult. That's why he stopped her. And Lil Tay was upset that she couldn't continue her desperate crave for attention over the last five years. So now she got a vendetta against her father. It's that simple. Also, think about it, bro. If Lil Tay hasn't been making any videos for the last five years, don't got any brand deals, don't got any sponsors, don't got no new videos or no new views, what money exactly would an established lawyer be living off of? The money ain't there. First of all, this man, He was bringing, when I was living with him, this is all, these are all events that happened before I became famous because he had not been in my life for years before then. He was bringing random ass women around all the time and literally hooking up with them in front of me. I was a child. Oh my God. I remember one time, it was the middle of the night and I was awakened by them next to me in the bed. And I could literally, she had her hand on my leg and I was frozen in place. I was so young at that time. I had no fucking idea what was going on. And I was just frozen in place. And then I moved and then that's when she took her leg off my hand. They were literally in bed next to me. They did not care. And they were literally disregarding the fact that I was even there. That's fucking insane. Really? These are some serious accusations. If it's true, her father is sick. But where's the proof? Did Lil Tay show any messages between her mother and her father where her mama is telling her daddy, yo, you are a sick man for having intercourse in the same bed as your daughter? Was CPS called? Was the police called? 
Did Lil Tay show any proof at all? Absolutely not. What Lil Tay did instead was what most liars do. They present an abundance of irrelevant receipts attached to the lie to try to make the lie more credible. So Lil Tay didn't show any proof that her father was having intercourse or being inappropriate around her. What she did show is messages from Craigslist and other dating apps that her father was trying to hook up with various women. No duh. Your father is a single man in his 30s who's a lawyer in Vancouver. He was hooking up with random women all the time, and he found them off of Craigslist. This. This is his Craigslist email to a random woman who had an ad. Okay, this is the email trying to hook up with people. This is my mom talking to somebody about it after she found out about it. What does this man going ahead and looking for some cheeks on these dating apps and Craigslist got to do with you faking your own death? This is what liars do, right? They bring in a lot of these red herrings to kind of like distract you and make you think their lie is more credible. When in fact, she's not proven a goddamn thing. Like nothing she stated here proves that her father was inappropriate with her sexually at all. But she continues with more red herrings. What she spoke on next was how her stepmama was a known scammer in the Philippines. Okay. <laughs> Even if that is true, what does this have to do with you faking your death. Honey Hope comes in the story. So, Honey Hope, she is Christopher John Hope's wife, currently. And he met her online when she was living in the Philippines. And she is a career scammer. When she was living in the Philippines, she was scamming as a career, which I will get into later. Oh. This is her. That's her right there. That's her and Chris. Just a bunch of fluff. It's a bunch of fluff. What she's doing, I think she learned from her father, right? Because her father is a lawyer, right? She's building character references, right? So she's building these character references for you to think, okay, Hannah Hope, Christopher Hope, they are scammers, they are abusers, they are bad people. So hence it's more believable at the end of this when I tell you guys that they're the ones who faked my death, you're more inclined to believe they faked my death because now you believe they're bad people opposed to a loving father who kept you off the internet for five years because you were making bad decisions as a kid that he didn't want to affect you as an adult. Sounds like a good father to me. Now, she moves on and accuses both her father, Chris Hope, and his wife, Hannah Hope, of abuse. And then things just went fucking downhill from there after she entered my life. Sick. And she... She would always take out her anger onto me. I, if her son did anything wrong, it would become my fault. And she, she punched me, she pinched me, pinching me was a really big thing. Chris mainly shoved me. And this is one of the worst incidents that happened. It was at this point I realized, wait, I've seen this before. And then I realized that the Lil Tay presentation you guys are seeing right now is not at the doing of Lil Tay. It's the exact same evidence, proof, narrative, and agenda that her brother put out a few years ago when he started a GoFundMe for Lil Tay. It's the exact same pictures, the exact same statements, the exact same messaging. So essentially Lil Tay is just reading off her brother's propaganda piece that he wrote against Lil Tay's father a few years ago. And this picture that Lil Tay is using as the holy grail of proof that her father abused her, one is a picture of her as like three, four, or five years old, right? But when you look at the picture, it don't look like abuse. You see different of various bumps all on her face. It looks like a rash and it's consistent because if you look on her back, the same rash is there with like the tiny red bumps all across it. So it's not even abuse. And even if her father did choose to discipline her, rather is pinching her cheeks or spanking her, yes, that's her father. He can discipline her if he wants to, right? But nothing she has shown shows that her father abused her. 
they forced me to watch many horror movies when I was in their house. One of them was Bride of Chucky. And I was, when they put it on, I couldn't get out of the room and I was literally sobbing. And I tried to put my face into a pillow when they were playing the horror movie in front of me. And Honey Hope, she had me in a chokehold so I couldn't escape. And I had to sit through the entire Bride of Chucky movie when I was young as fuck. And then- Really? <laughs> Be for real right now, bruh. Now, other than her parents scarring her and traumatizing her for life and leaving her with generational curses by making her watch The Bride of Chucky, she claims that her parents also made her eat rotten and parasitic food. Mind you, this is the very same accusation down to a T that her brother made against her parents a few years ago on the Gold Fund Me when he was trying to raise some money for her. They were feeding me the most disgusting ass food. Look at this. What is this shit? This is what they were packing me for lunch. Luckily for us, the brother made a GoFundMe so we can see the pictures in full HD. She showed a picture of a pizza. Now, mind you, there's no proof or evidence of when this photo was taken. It could have been taken after a long, grueling six hour day of school. So the pizza may be, you know, a little dry. It showed a pizza and it also showed this, which I can't quite make out. But none of this looks like it's super rotten or parasitic or rotten at all. It looks like, you know, this is what the food looks like after seven or eight hours of leaving it in your backpack and bringing it home. My mom had discovered that they were packing me this bullshit for lunch. Rotten, frozen, parasitic, moldy. Look at this. Who? That's candy. That's expired candy. These are my mom's text messages to him. Sending him these photos and like, why are you sending this to your child for school? This is, these are the text messages. This is him saying he discovered that my mom was sending me lunches after she found out that I, I was being given rotten food at his place. So she started dropping me off fresh lunches at school. And then what does he say? He says, if she continues doing that, he will continue to deduct child support. Luckily for us, her brother showed another message that sort of provided a more reasonable context than the context that Lote is trying to provide, which is my father threatened to take my mama off of child support if she keeps bringing me fresh lunch at school. What the father actually said was, we are spending a lot of money right now on Lote's lunch. And you bringing lunch for her at school without telling me in advance is wasting my money. So please let me know in advance that you are bringing Lil Tay's lunch so I don't have to waste my money packing her lunch. To me, that's reasonable, right? And he says, or I'm deducting $10 from you, which is, you know, <laughs> it sounds like a cheap dude, right? But nonetheless, though, that's reasonable, bro. Like, I'm wasting my money. And you just undermine me and bring lunch? Okay, then tell me you want to bring her lunch for the week or for the month and, you know, we'll let you handle that. So we don't waste money. That sounds like a reasonable request. But Lil Tay is trying to twist and turn that to make the father look like he's a super demon. That sounds like something that my dad would say and your dad would say as well. Then Lil Tay will go on and on and on about how the shoes her father made her wear wearing up to par, et cetera, et cetera. And then she continued and accused her father of being a racist because he's racist as fuck. Do you know one of the reasons that he said to the court that he should have custody of me after I became famous? He said it was because my mom was letting me associate with black and Hispanic people in the entertainment industry. And he said that he, they were going to get me into drugs or they were gonna steal my money or they are gonna exploit me. He hates black and Hispanic people. That was one of his arguments of why I shouldn't be in the entertainment industry. Let's just say she's right, which is hard because she's a pathological liar. But let's just say she's right. What does this have to do with you lying <laughs> about being dead for a comeback? Nothing at all. Bro, listen, I haven't met Lotte's father. I don't know what's in that man's heart. I can't speak on whether or not he's racist or he's not. I'm just saying there's no proof. So, so until she provides proof, 
I can't even speak on it, right? But Lil Tay finally gets to clearing up the rumors. There have been a shit ton of random ass people, frauds, who have claimed to be my manager. I have never had a manager. All those people are con artists. They're exploiting my name for clout and for industry credit. Peep how she sets up the lie, right? She says, hey, I ain't never had no manager. Essentially saying that Harry's saying, uh, the Asian dude you seen at the beginning of this video who essentially said, bro, they're lying about being hacked. They're lying about all of this. She puts that out there to sort of discredit him, all right? Like, like people actually strategically place things to set up the lie, bro. This kid is a skill manipulator. And they, okay, this is where it gets into the death hoax. So, as you all know, Chris Hope was the one that did the death hoax. He was trying to sabotage me. No, we don't know. Break it down. Expound, would you please? How did your father get access to your Instagram account when your brother is the only one who had access to that Instagram account over the last five years? Break it down to us some more. Expound, would you please? Explain. How did your father or why did your father want to fake a death hoax? What proof do you have? Why did your father want to sabotage you? Would you expound on this, please, Lil Tay? Meanwhile, he was working with this other con artist that was claiming to be my manager, and they had a crypto coin together. Their plan was to fake my death and then promote the crypto coin, which, by the way, the, ma the f manager, the manager admitted to. He said he'd been working on the crypto coin for months. These people are frauds. Ah! How does that make sense? Okay, let's just say this, right? That we had no outside party confirming or denying anything. Let's just dissect Lil Tay words as if we have no outside knowledge of anything, all right? Lil Tay stated that her father and Harry Singh faked her death so they could promote a crypto coin. So essentially, they fake as if Lil Tay had passed away then they drop the crypto coin and people buy the crypto coin as a tribute to Lil Tay, the great old Ponzi scheme. But the crypto coin wasn't out yet when the Lil Tay death announcement was announced. The crypto coin still ain't out yet. Harry Singh came out almost immediately and said he doesn't believe she's dead. He thinks is a hoax, even though he can't confirm it. Then he later on like doubled down and says, yo, this is a hoax. They weren't hacked. This is... Says dumb faking. I wouldn't put it past Lote or 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 her brother. So why would somebody who is incentivized because he wants to sell a crypto coin to make people believe that you're dead? Why would he then come out almost immediately and say she's not dead and he thinks is a hoax? This proves how much the press did not give a fuck about facts. They cared about slandering my name. They did not do any fact checking. As long as you claim to be my manager, they would just take your word for it. If he was behind the fake death rumors, he would have done what Lil Tay and her brother did, which is wait 24 to 48 hours to confirm whether or not she was dead or not. He would have dropped the crypto coin, sat back, wait 24 to 48 hours as people bought the crypto coin, and then confirm, oh no, she's not dead. After the crypto coin already made a lot of money, then he would have cashed out as the crypto coin plummets. Right? Like, that's what would have happened if he was behind it, but he wasn't. Her lie doesn't make sense at all. She's clearly a fraud and manipulator. This chick here deserves to be in jail. Like, if there was a place to where people go for not really breaking crimes, but just being just super morally bankrupt, she will go there. This chick is a psychotic narcissist. As long as you, as long as anyone claimed that my mom got fired from her job just for controversy purposes, they would just report on it, even though it's not fucking true. I hope you realize how much bullshit has been surrounding my name from the moment I became famous till now. And I hope this cleared shit up for you. And then we found out what all the hoopla was about. We found out why Lil Tay faked her death, accused her father of abuse, and took us through this entire roller coaster ride. We found out her end goal was to promote her new music video that she was dropping today. So she took everybody through this entire roller coaster ride, lied on her father, lied that she was dead, faked her own death, lied to her fans, 
to promote a music video. And here's the thing. She's probably going to succeed. She's probably going to move on with her career, be a popular influencer, and suffer no consequences at all. We've seen what happened with Neon. Neon faked his death. Neon cloud chased. And now Neon is on the kick and just got offered a $25 million deal from Rumble. There's no consequences for bad behavior in these times. So, hey, Lil Tay, enjoy the clout you got from this, man. Chances are you're probably going to succeed and have a fruitful career from this. If you're still watching the video, though, click on this video somewhere on my screen to find out how Drake just got exposed twice in 24 hours by these IG models. Click on this video to find out what I'm talking about. All right, I'm going to see you guys in this video. I'm out of here, folks. Peace.